along the road um, something a seed had been sown and that's what I can all I can say and obviously having been in horticulture most of my life as my proper job as it were um, you know sowing seeds and uh, some seeds take years yes. some need to go in fridges and freezers for stratification and all of that I understand all of that that it's about time and I think then that was when the seed was sown mm -hmm. and suddenly you're starting to think why am I here what's this about and in horticulture I was sharing with a friend that's come up with me today Adrian um, it was very much about in horticulture you see such a diverse array of stuff leaves trees flowers you know and I know man has had his role in there but how could this happen you know if you magnify a seed I mean that it's just so intricate and very often in many many gardens across the across the the country is this verse about God is in you're nearer to God in the garden than any place on a, here on earth we've all seen the blacks mm -hmm. um, and so something in your head is saying was this an accident but because it's not part of who you are you're not saying well was it a big bang or was it God you're not thinking like that you're just trying to understand why mm. yeah mm. Mm. yeah so that started your process yeah started me thinking yeah. where did the end the end, the end came through tragically came through a really hard time um i was in horticulture and because of the death of my wife i found it was too hard to to, to handle and uh, so i left a friend of mine who ran a village news agents and again this has had great implications in my life but um uh, offered me a, a weekend's manager's job of a news agent in Burwash and um, through that I started to learn some computer skills and started to 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 uh, deal with people you know on a one-to-one -one. and um, through that uh, I heard that Unigate were looking for franchisees and uh, so I applied uh, for one of these franchisees and uh, I went and had an interview and, and was offered a milk round and when I got the milk round um, it just happened to be a milk round that was out in Cranbrook and this milk round just happened now I don't know whether you're into horticulture and gardens and stuff but just happened to be I, I dig I dig for my wife <laughs> yeah um, but it, the part of the round was actually involved delivering every day to Sissinghurst Castle oh. and Sissinghurst Garden is probably one of our great treasures and so I used to find myself every morning sitting up at Sissinghurst looking through the arch and looking across and just wondering what it's all about and so as a milkman um, you're exposing yourself to people more yes. um, you know you're coming across all walks of life and, and unlike the DJ and where where because we've not mentioned that but unlike the DJ and where you're kind of got your equipment you have, between and, you and, 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 and you're yes. a power yes you know you can make people enjoy themselves or not um, you were very much part of the community and so through that someone uh, had given me a good news Bible which I thought was pretty naff really I thought I must be a pretty awful milkman um, to get a tip of a of a good news Bible why, would you, why ever would you want one of those and I remember shaking it to see if there was any money in it uh, but sadly there wasn't um, but it, it came to be a very part of uh, mm -hmm. me coming to faith mm -hmm. uh, because every Christmas you know used to do really well at Christmas sort of a couple of grand a year I suppose in tips which uh, so January I used to clear off to places like Australia and whatever and um, so the milk business was quite successful I spent five years with that so it took us to about 96 97 milk business was good I had my own house new car every year everything in the garden was lovely um, but then it was the the worthlessness of it all mm. why was I doing it why was I getting up at three o'clock why would I do that and so it was all through that that I suddenly hit depression got quite depressed and um, became quite hard and then at one time I was very depressed and very low but I happened to read in this in this book I kind of sensed God saying to me you know just read the book you know and the only book I wasn't a great reader I don't know about you but I'd rather watch it on TV or DVD than, than physically read it and I uh, I have found this this passage in Ephesians what I found to be Ephesians 2 
I had looked in the Bible many times before, looked in Genesis to find Phil Collins, and uh, sadly he wasn't there. <laughs> and one day maybe he will be, as it were. Um, but so none of it made much sense. But I read in this Ephesians 2, which was very key, because my dad to, 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 for my dad to show you love, you had to earn it. Mm -hmm. It was about working for yes. it. And uh, so it was very much about um, what you did. And then very often you'd work really hard uh, and he'd find the fault in it rather than the praise, you'd right. find the fault. Right. And so I read in this Ephesians 2 about this God that loved me even though I didn't care less about him. And I, this is bad paraphrasing for any kind of theologians out there. But um, it was very much about um, him loving me. And the line that did it for me out of the good news was, and there was nothing I could do to earn. Mm. And I have to say, that night I found an incredible peace. Really? Incredible peace that I can honestly say to this very day, and that was, what, 13 years ago, um, has never left me. And, um, and so I, I had to sort of discover this Bible. So I spoke to the person that gave me the Bible and, uh, and uh, praise the Lord now. I mean, that lovely person was Avril and we've been married, what, 12 years now? Um, so... I came to faith at that time. Uh -huh. uh, the great thing was, I suppose, was I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know any Christians. I didn't have any boring Christian bang knocking my door every day, seeing if I'd taken another step towards the kingdom. Um, so I was spared all of that, which was really quite nice. Um, so it was really to emphasize that, you know, as human beings, we think we can make someone a Christian or we can be that big key person that al allows that person's life to change. But no, you know, I think now as a Christian um, evangelist and pastor, I would say, you know, the power comes from God's mm. Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Doesn't come from us. He uses us. He allows us. But it doesn't come from us. It's the power mm. of... And, and until someone has been touched by the power of the spirit the lights just don't mm, come on that's right that's norman right. greenbound's song you know going up to the spirit in the sky that's where i'll go when i die you know uh, george harrison singing my sweet lord i mean if you take those two songs and say okay tell me what the words say it's as obvious as the nose is on mm -hmm. your face mm -hmm. but to someone who's not looking mm -hmm. ain't gonna happen mm. I mean, I always say to people that we cannot save people and therefore no. our job isn't to set out and save people. But of course, that doesn't mean we shouldn't evangelize, but evangelism no, no, no. is communicating yeah, and getting alongside people and reaching out to mm. people. But as you say, God alone. And so whether it is like you, somebody gives you a Bible that mm. starts doing it and the odd Mm. things that are said to people it wasn't somebody sitting down or really um you know and, and for me the same or, although somebody actually sat down and really went through the gospel i went mm. home and prayed by myself and yeah. and it, 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 in other words it, it it is in the end that transaction yeah. between god and the individual that we cannot do we mm. can lead them we yeah. can encourage them we can help but we can't yeah. we can't get them. and again i would say you know for for every christian the most powerful weapon we have in our toolbox is prayer. Mm. You know, instead of pointing the finger at somebody saying, well, you should know this or you should know that, actually praying for that person has more value. And uh, one thing I believe in greatly is like prayer walking areas and districts. It's very, very important. You know, it's in horticulture, you have a situation where you might be hired to, 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 to look after a big garden and the garden's not been looked after for years and it's full of briars and brambles and, and, and all that stuff. Well, as a, because you're a horticulturalist and you turn up with a packet of seeds, you know, three weeks later you don't walk to the big house saying, look what I've grown. Yes. You know, there's a lot of sweat, a lot of toil, a lot yes. of heartache, a lot of graft has to go in. And I have to say, many, many Christians are incredibly lazy. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll sit in a prayer meeting and say, Lord, bring us the harvest. Yes. But actually, we don't want to see the calluses on that's, our hands. Right. We don't want to get involved with that's the brambles. Right. We don't want to do any of that. Let somebody else do that. All I want is the glory of bringing this person to the Lord or whatever, however we would phrase that. Mm -hmm. But actually, there's a lot of graft goes in. And that graft very often is as simple as prayer. Mm. As simple as prayer.